Yeah, thank you for having me here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the conference so far. Was it good? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah. Oh, better. Okay, cool. So during the, during the day, we saw a lot of cool topics, how to bring Angular, for example, to the server side, how to bring it to Raspberry Pi, how to bring it to mobile devices. And yeah, I would um, show you another example of where could we use Angular 2 to, to build and craft applications that leverage almost every scenario. So I will use uh, a tool called Electron. It's from a small company from the US called GitHub. Perhaps some of, of you may know that company. Um, but first, some questions. Who is actually using Angular 2? Please raise your hand. OK, 30 35%. And what about Electron? Has anyone used Electron so far? OK, just a few. Good. Um, so yeah, who am, I, who am I? And my name is Thorsten. I'm from Germany. I work for a consultancy called ThinkTecture. We are mainly focusing on empowering other developers to build modern applications using native web technologies, such as Angular, such as JavaScript or Node.js on the server side. And most important thing right here, of course, Twitter handle or email address. If you have any kind of question or uh, feedback, just feel free to send me a tweet or email. Yeah, and what will we see in the upcoming 28 minutes? is uh, a short introduction into the topic. What is Electron? What is it offering for you as a JavaScript or Angular 2 developer? Which benefits is it offering? And then we will dive into yeah, some, some live coding, getting actually an app up and running on different desktop platforms. And last but not least, I have, uh, we, ha we have already a working sample that I would like to, to show to you and to explain how to you know, configure Angular 2 to work differently on the, on the web platform, on mobile platforms, or on the desktop platform using just simple Angular 2 mechanisms like empowering the DI a little bit, but achieving all this with, ha with having a single code base which is always an important statement from our side to maintain only one branch of code instead of you know, having or spreading your app across 12 platforms would mean to have 12 different code bases if you follow another approach and not take Angular 2 a little bit further than just the web. OK, so what is Electron? Well, first, it's just a small tool that allows us to build desktop apps using JavaScript. So very cool. Um, it has been created by, by GitHub under the first name was Atom Shell. And right now it's it's yeah, it's on the on the wave to become even popular. And there are plenty of apps already available to different kind of you know app stores, Windows stores, or whatever for, for store. Um, yeah, there, there were more and more apps popping up and using Electron as a, as a base framework, but as a user, you didn't recognize it at all. So GitHub created the project initially to, uh, yeah, to build their famous editor, Atom. So Atom is one of the famous users of Electron. And so perhaps you get a feeling of what's possible with Electron and where we could take our Angular apps to. From a technical perspective, it combines two incredible things. First of all, it combines Chromium, the core library underneath Chrome. So take your Chrome browser, subtract all those Google services, and you have the lib Chromium. So that means we as developers, we could have a defined environment where we could run our Angular apps in which means we, have, we are always targeting in Chrome. So CSS issues regarding Internet Explorer and rendering stuff, they are gone. Having crappy developer tools like those in Internet Explorer, sorry for that, time's gone because we always have the Chrome developer tools. 
that we can use to dig into details of our app if there's something not working as expected. The other thing which comes with uh, Electron is Node.js. So, yeah, I think I don't have to introduce Node.js at all, or have I? No. Well, think about that. So you got Chromium on the one side, Node.js on the other side, and Electron takes those two, bundles them together, and give it to you as a developer just as one package that you could use and put your app sources inside of it and distribute it to all, yeah, to the public or to your customer's audience. So it empowers you to create real desktop applications without having the need of learning dedicated languages for all those platforms like, I don't know, C, uh, C Sharp or .NET on the Windows side, C++ on the Linux side, for example, or Objective-C or Swift on the Mac side. So all these requirements were kind of gone. We could reuse the existing knowledge that you've already gained throughout the years of spending days and days, and since there were many routers, nights in Angular, um, to get things up and running. And besides that, Electron is adding some non-functional, yeah, well, non Electron is fixing some non-functional requirements, like having built in a crash reporter. So imagine you have deployed your app to thousands of customers, and somewhere something goes wrong. Well, you can handle that out of the box. Electron is providing you an API to get detailed information about what was actually going wrong, wrong on that machine. In addition to that, there's an auto app data which allows you to implement on an easy way, with an easy way, implement automatically updating your app without having the requirement to go through the app store. And this for all major desktop platforms. So it runs on Windows, on Linux, and on OS X. And yeah, the list of the companies who's actually using it is that long. So I've just picked a few. And maybe if we, so let's uh, try the internet. Let's go to the App Store. It's, it's a German version from the App Store, but if things haven't changed over the last week or two, uh, come on. One of the trending apps is WhatsApp for desktop. Who's using WhatsApp? Almost everybody, right? Right. Um, so the top trending app in the German OS X app store is a WhatsApp for desktop, but it's not the official one. So, OK, app store won't show up. Uh, let's go to. Oh, I, tr I, I didn't sign out of WhatsApp, so whatsapp.com. Let's go over there. They have all the functionality, well, I signed out, baked in into a single, yeah, into a single page application. And the guy who actually wrote that top trending app, which is, of course, a paid app, as every app on the Mac that makes sense, it's about $4. So he took this side and wrapped it with Electron, which means it's an effort for roughly 10 minutes. And he became the top trending app in the App Store. And I think I could imagine that he made a whole bunch of money with that. And yeah, so I think it's definitely worth looking into that. And a few months ago, WhatsApp announced that they now have also desktop apps. So it's always a good trick to double check what you have installed. Let's say show in Finder. I will make it a little bit bigger. And let's say show package contents. And let's dive into a bit. And right here we find, for example, a file called app.azar. Azar is uh, yeah, a, file, a file type created by GitHub to package web applications and distribute them, for example, as Atom packages that could be asynchronously installed within Atom or that could ship an entire app. 
So as soon as, as you look into a package contents and see a file with the ending ASAR, then you could, recognize, you could bet that this app has been built using Electron. So a lot of famous apps, the list is even longer, as I said, uh, were using Electron as their platform and are bringing their existing single page applications to all platforms and they're addressing even more customers. Because who was forced to create an Angular 2 application and, and support Internet Explorer? Who had that pain? Yeah, which version? No. Uh, yeah, don't, don't start that discussion. Well, it is, it is challenging. You know, all those fancy new CSS frameworks, well, they work pretty cool in Chrome, in Firefox, but when it comes to Internet Explorer, it may be challenging. So, yeah, all those companies decided instead of, you know, patching and monkey patching all those CSS things to have their their app working probably in the browser, they said, hey, you're using Internet Explorer, well, go and download our desktop app. And they were shipping the app within a Chrome without the user actually knowing it or recognizing it. So that's one of the biggest features or one of the biggest yeah, non-functional features that you could get when addressing those scenarios using Electron. From the architectural perspective, it's Pretty, pretty simple. So we have dedicated APIs on all different platforms. Like, for example, let's take the, the file system platform, uh, the, the file system API. And Electron is wrapping all those APIs and exposing them to Node.js. So the blue square over there, that's your main interface that you use as a developer to talk to any platform related features. Nothing else. There's no need for C Sharp, for, uh, for C++, or for Objective-C. Your application will be divided into two different, different, different um, processes. First, there's the main process, which is actually executed in Node.js, and it's responsible you know, for taking care of the application lifecycle, for yeah, talk, talking to those native APIs. And on top of that, there's Chromium. And Chromium is in all docs and samples, it's referred as the renderer process. So that's the, that's the, the area where your single page application will be executed. And those two processes may communicate with each other. And in order to get that done, there is an IPC module exposed to both, to the main and to the renderer process that you could load and send, send simple messages as you would do it with HTML5 post messaging from one process to another, either synchronously or asynchronously, and you could respond to them. So it's a very easy architecture, but it's flexible and it allows you to yeah, separate the, the different things a bit to have the main process being responsible for using all those native APIs and to have uh, yeah, the renderer being responsible for serving your single page application. Okay, so that's for reference. Let's go over there. What do you need to build such a desktop app? Well, actually three things. First, your existing single page application which is, of course, an Angular app, right? No, just joking, it's every app that is a kind of spy that could live without going to the server for actually serving the app. For consuming data, of course, that's fine, but in order to have a good user experience, it's a good idea to package the app and push it already to the client before actually doing that during startup time. Second, a manifest. That manifest is pretty simple and well known. It's actually a package, the package JSON format that we all know from Node.js uh, or from NPM. So these three properties are mandatory. Everything else is optional. So nothing more than these three lines of code. And last but not least, the instruction file. The instruction file 
is responsible for telling electron how it should act in a different life cycle um, yeah, events. So I have a sample one right here. Um, but instead of you know, looking at that code, let's give it a try. So let's close that one and move over here. OK, let's clear that one. Is that working for you? Is that font size big enough? Yeah, yeah? OK, cool. So we need a package, ooh, package.json, and we need our instruction file. And finally, an editor. OK, let's also increase the font size a bit. And let's go to package.json. Package.json, yeah. OK, so first the manifest. Let's say we have a name. It's Angular Camp BCN. We have a, a version, which is a semantic version. So let's say it's 0.0.1. And we have our main entrance point that we have to specify, which is our instruction file. So we say it's index.js. Let's save that, and let's go to our instruction file. So our instruction file, Electron is taking care of that. So it's spinning up the process, loading the main file, and give you a very, very simple API that you could use to yeah, say, what should happen if the app starts. So first, let's say we want Electron to be there. And then we could just ask Electron for different functionalities. So for example, we want like to have the app. We would like, of course, to create a kind of visual representation for our app, which is available through the browser window class. And uh, well, let's say that's enough for now. Const um, from electron, is that right? Uh, just double checking. No, yeah. equals electron, yeah. Import require destruction, well, you know. OK, so the app is providing different events that we could respond to in order to do something. So at some point, we would like to say, hey, when the app is up and running, we would like to to display a browser window and navigate to a given URL. So we have our main window right here. Let's be, let that be undefined for the beginning. So as soon as there is an event triggered called ready, we would like to define what makes our app visual. So it's a new browser window. And right here, there are, I think, 40 or 50 different options that you could set, like the form being transparent, the form having a custom header, stuff like that. So I advise you to go to the Electron documentation and double check these. It's, there are really, really cool things already built in. So let's say this, and let's say that, that we see anything. OK. And um, yeah, finally, we could uh, say main window dot set, uh, set title to angular camp. And we could say main window dot load URL HTTP angular camp dot org. OK. So this would be enough to just spin it up and, and start the app. But you know, with great flexibility comes great responsibility. We have to take care about a few lifetime uh, yeah, events because of the different operating systems we're treating apps differently. So first of all, there is that uh, what should happen if um, app dot on and that's, I have to, to look at the name because it's not that intuitive as I would name it. Window all closed. I would say all windows closed, but well. OK, as soon as that happens, we would like to actually quit our app. And this is due to uh, 
earn it quite quick. Uh, this is due to OS X, because on OS X you could have no visual representation, but still have the menu bar telling the user that you're in the context of a given app. So that's because of OS X. And then we would like to add some, we would like to add some window closed, yeah, some cleanup, main window, dot on. Uh, is it closed? Closed. Then we would like to set, just clean up the things, main window equals null. Okay, and I think that's all we could, again, here provide another title, like loading or something else, but I think that should be fine for now. So we have an app actually being consumed from the public website, and I hope the web is able to you know, display the site right now. Uh, we have that instruction file, and we have our package JSON. So how to package it? Well, there's an NPM module called Electron Prebuild, and if you download that one, install it globally, and just execute Electron on your system, then you see this. A native application pops up and say, hey, drag your app uh, right here, and I'm able to display it, or you could just provide the path to the app that you would like to show, like local, the local directory, and if I have saved all the files, it's loading up the website from the Angular camp, and while the internet is working in the back, let's move on a bit. Well, that is actually just displaying a website. Let's do some native integration, like global shortcut, shortcut. Global shortcut gives you the possibility to, to define shortcuts not only in the scope of your application, no, they will only work when your application is in the background or is processing something. So it's just a simple example how to use the APIs exported or provided uh, by Electron. So as soon as our app is ready for being displayed, we would like to register that global shortcut. Let's say global shortcut dot register, register, and we could pass a kind of token to specify across all platforms on which global shortcut that should uh, that function should react. So control plus shift, and let's take D because the E is reserved. And we would like to execute the function which is responsible for, responsible for bringing the goodness to our app. Contents dot toggle dev tools. Well, and we have, of course, because we are registering it globally, we have to clean up the things uh, right before the app closes. App on will quit. We have to say global shortcut dot unre unregister all. Okay. In the meantime, hopefully, the web responded. Nope, it's still loading. Well, you have a huge website, right? Okay, let's give it another try. It's, again, loading, but right now we can hit Shift, Command, D, and it brings up Chrome developer tools that were telling me, well, there's perhaps an, yeah, an 404 with actually loading the, the map file for, is it, no, underscore, jQuery, something? Yeah, jQuery is not defined. Well, there is some work for the upcoming website next year. But as you can see, you have, imagine you have packaged your, uh, you have packaged your app and you could just provide those functionalities to users being in a dedicated role or just to provide some debugging experience built in your app. So cool, that was the 101 thing. So what we have done, um, let me double check the, how much time do I have? Uh, yeah, cool. Will work somehow. Um, so what we have right here is an application for managing board games. And we have, instead of, you know, 
executing Electron and providing the path, we used Gulp to package everything. And package everything means package our Angular 2 app for the web, for the mobile, and for the desktop platforms. So let's start, I think, uh, well, let's start the default task. Don't know what it's actually doing. What you have to do on Angular side to, you know, have different implementations, presentation mode, where it is, over here, is nothing special. So we have, um, let's go to the all app services. For example, we have native camera capabilities. And we did nothing special right here, like shown in uh, line 36. Uh, we registered the camera service depending on the current environment. So we say, hey, if you're running from on a mobile phone, we would like to have access to the native camera capabilities. If you're running on the desktop, we would also have access to the native camera capabilities, but instead of using native APIs, we would like to use the browser API, which is offered by Chrome. So there were different implementations, you know, uh, being uh, the decision is made on simple, really, really simple things like um, trying to double check if it is Electron as a user agent or trying to double check if Cordova has been used to actually package the Angular app as a, as a cross-platform mobile app. So I have my phone right here and let's that's the final demo and then I'm, I'm I made it through it so let's say file new I think it's movie recording can't remember it yeah okay let's take the iPhone 6 yeah that is my iTunes stuff which automatically syncs some shit get away so okay Hopefully nobody's texting me strange messages right now. <laughs> As you see, while being on the plane, there is a, a, a cool game that I, I'm playing in over the last weeks, and my girlfriend is already complaining about that. So right here we have an, an app responsible for managing board games. And as soon as the web response, no, it doesn't respond, let's create a new game, let's say we are playing chess, huh? because it's boring here. Okay, I hopefully it's not your feeling. Um, let's save it. Right now it's uh, trying to reach the API, save, persist that new game, and in the meantime I could just call the build to fire up the Electron app, build Electron dash OS X, which is doing nothing special. It's, it's packaging the Angular app, it's going downloading, or it has already downloaded the, the bits responsible for, responsible for um, packaging Electron uh, side, by, side by side with your app, and it's bringing it together. Okay, so come on takes a few seconds and let's open the dist folder and we will find an place the phone right here we will find a real app which could be distributed through the app store and there we have the same interface which has actually better internet connection than my mobile phone so let's take this one. There is Monopoly of also being listed right here, and I could opt in. So we have a kind of uh, location service. It takes a few seconds. Yeah, it's not working at, at all on this. So yeah, let's take a new one. That wasn't good. Yeah, that's better. And let's say, no, I need a location. I need a location. The Wi-Fi is that bad. Let's double check the one on the phone. Test. Test. <coughs> Let's try the iPhone to persist it again. Well, and to show you that it's real plat cross-platform, let's uh, 
fire up a Windows 10. Actually, saving it doesn't work because I would like to take, also take a an, an selfie in front of the audience uh, and just push it from the iPhone and yeah, consume it from uh, the Electron app. But you may, as you may have recognized, there are, there's a small heart right here which is also using Electron's API to create native integration like the tray icon over here, which you can use to hook off um, yeah, periodic actions like synchronization, stuff like that. And you could, of course, recall into the Angular application. So right here, we're just sending a message to the renderer process, and Angular is responsible for actually catching that message and telling the router where to go. So I've migrated that, or I've upgraded our sample to RC3, but it's still the deprecated router because there will be more deprecated routers. And uh, yeah, so from the Angular side, as I said, it's the deprecated router, but it's really, really easy. You could require, and uh, there's uh, some comment I wrote because I was a little bit frustrated because of system.js. Um, but it's, it's fairly easy. You could just require Electron and say, hey, if there comes a message called navigate to from the main process, yeah, deal with it, take the string that gets forwarded to you and just navigate there. And when we went to the index, to the instruction file, the instruction file just tells the main window, send a message of the type navigate to and go to the radius search. And that's the, the screen that you saw where you could just say, hey, give me the players 250 kilometers away from here. And we are not doing any image optimization, so it's right now trying to download 12 megapixel iOS images, which may be a little bit challenging. And to finish up, right here, there is the same app, the same source code running. No, not OneDrive. Well, clicking, just clicking C, boards for Windows. And there's the Windows desktop app. There it is. So as I've seen, it's really, really simple to bring your um, Angular 2 application to all desktop platforms. And there are. As I've said, when creating browser windows, there are many, many, many options. And one guy from the community built some cool things using 3JS. Who has seen 3JS already? OK, cool. If, not, if, you have not, if you haven't seen, it's definitely worth looking into it. Electron, electron, and then I will. Normally, you have to close a talk with either kittens or lasers or fancy stuff like that. But I have a fancy, oh no, I missed the point to provide the path, which is local path. You could build fancy animations having transparent windows on all platforms using the powers that Chrome as a platform provides to you as a developer. And yeah, I think I'm two minutes over, but with this fancy animation, I will say thank you and wish you a pleasant evening. Thanks.